Welcome back to video two of our watercolor lesson. We will be wrapping up the watercolor part of our lesson today. Last time we did a wet on wet technique where we got the paper super, super wet and then we, um, we had the colors kind of run uh, together when we switch the colors going down our landscape. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna finish up our water coloring, okay? So the materials you're gonna need uh, are your watercolor set, your extra paintbrush from school, you might need that. You will need a, a paper towel or a napkin. You will also need your composition that we were working on last time where we drew our horizon line in the middle, hills in the background, uh, trees up front and some shrubs and you're gonna need a, a cup of water a very very tiny amount of water not very much go ahead and press pause go get those materials and come back and we are gonna wrap up the the water coloring this is actually gonna be a very quick lesson okay so I have Sam with me today uh, uh, as always and he has his workstation all ready to go hi Sam hi. and um, I'm gonna start off by reminding you of the things that we talk about when it comes to having a good attitude with art. Um, I have Sarah here and she's pointing to herself. For I think. some reason. I think she would like to, uh, would you like to read? Yeah, would, would, would you like to read all of them? Okay. Oh, you want to tell them the rule you made up? Mm -hmm. Sam, would you like to, to read the things that we go over every time? Okay, here we go, Sam. Nice loud voice. Number one is always try your best. Number two, if you get frustrated, take a deep breath, count to ten. Take a deep breath and try it again, which is persevering and never giving up. Everyone's art will turn out differently. Your artwork is uniquely yours, which means if you're like doing this art project with your siblings, it's going to be completely different, even a twin, friend, parent, uncle, aunt, grandma, grandpa, anyone. Also, art is not perfect. Awesome. And then Sam's sister, Sarah, she came up with um, with a rule that she, I think she shared with us once. What, also, what try is, your best. Definitely. Yeah, well, that's number one. Try your best. Oh, <laughs> Sarah, what would you like to share with them? Always have fun. Yeah. If you're not having fun while you're doing this art lesson, I want you to take a break and come back, okay? Well, if you really think of it, it depends what you're drawing or painting. Yeah, you but can sometimes paint your emotions like blue, emotions like red. That is true. That is true. I think you mentioned that last time too. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. You ready to get started, Sammy? We're just going to wrap it up. Okay. So last time, like I was saying at the very beginning of the video, we did the wet on wet technique where we got the whole paper wet and then we started with, um, I think we started with the hills and then we did the sky and then we did the ground. And so the colors kind of ran together. And I forgot to mention this last time. Um, the whole point of doing that is to give the perspective of distance. When you look out far into the distance um, of a scenery, you'll notice that things, uh, when they're really, really far from your eyes, they look uh, a little bit on the blurrier side. So this all in the background, as the colors kind of ran together when they met, it looks a little bit more on the blurry side. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to bring the the trees and the shrubs into more of a focus and we're going to make them darker so that they appear like they're in the front of the picture. So we're not going to use a, a ton of water today. We're going to actually use um, a little bit of water, actually probably the least amount of water that you, you can so that it actually looks more like, uh, instead of watercolor, it looks a little bit more like paint. So go ahead and open up your paint set. You may choose to use the brush that came inside your paint set, or you may choose to use the brush that uh, we use for our paint lessons. Uh, and we are going to start with the trees. So we, we chose to do bare trees. Sammy has one single leaf left on one of his tree branches. But we did bare trees because it's the fall and we're, one, we're doing the, the a, a fall scenery. So if you, you can do that, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by dipping our brush into a little bit of water and we're gonna take the brown and we're going to paint in, I mean, you might need to add a little bit more than the water than that. 
we're going to paint in our trees and when I use um, less water, actually, I think I might have used too much water, so I'm gonna dab my paintbrush. The less water you use, the more the, the watercolor, the darker the watercolor appears. So I'm gonna just, I gotta really wipe off my water. So Sammy, I used too much water and I think you might wanna wipe off some water too. Oh, I don't think I'm fine, look. It's darker. It is darker, yeah. You need enough water in order to get the paint on your brush. Oh yeah. And then the tree is gonna look darker than the background, okay? So I'm working at it. This might take a little bit more time to get, there we go. So I'm using very, very little water, but I do have to use enough water in order to get the paint to spread. So take your time with this. Get the tree a little bit more on the dark side. It'll appear to be more in the, in the foreground of the scenery, meaning up close. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using um, a Sharpie next video so that we can get our, um, our lines to pop a little bit more. Sammy's having a better go at this than I am. Yep. It seems like the, it, when I add just the tiniest bit of water, it gets it, it gets my brown really diluted. Yeah, like hard to move. And no, um, when you dilute it. In, it makes it smoother, like, right? Yeah, the, the more water you have, the more slipperier, slipperier the paint is, and the more it moves. Here we go, I got a little bit of a rhythm going. My, um, bush things. So your bushes, it's the same concept. So the Dark colors that you're gonna pick for your bushes, I, you use a very little amount of water. Okay. There we go. It's nice and, uh, and more bold of a color. My tree is. I need more water. And now I'm going up and over my horizon line. And since it's in the in the front of the picture, it, it goes across the horizon line. It goes uh, up and over the, the hills. Okay, now that I'm done, I have to do the last step. And I need a pencil. Okay. I gotta do the last step. So, Sarah was telling me to remind you guys that sometimes with watercolor, it might go out of the lines because that's just the nature of paint. It's hard to... Actually, Hard, yeah. harder to stay in it's harder to stay in the lines when you're painting than say if you're coloring also a lot of famous artists I think like make um, really beautiful artwork by blending in their colors De Not, like yes specific lines like some geographic art Yes. Shapes and stuff, but blending. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And they usually don't use pencil. <laughs> right? Okay, can I share yours? Go ahead and take a seat. Yep. Can I just put it in the camera? Oh, you want to put it underneath? Sure. So this is Sammy's. He did the uh, um like a bright greenish yellow for the bushes. And then he did his trees darker. And next time he's going to come in... There's one leaf here. Hey Sam, I think you need to come in here and you need to get the brown a little bit more inside of that tree. Okay. So go ahead and take a seat and keep going. If you look at mine, Sammy, if you look at mine, I really got all the, the areas of the tree painted in. So I'm just finishing up my first tree here.
And even though my background is um, brown, because I've done my tree a darker shade of the brown, it makes uh, the tree it makes the tree um, appear to be up front. How about now? Beautiful. I think you can get a little bit more paint up in the edges. Just take your time. Everyone's going at their own pace. You can pause the video. There's really not much more for me to say. Yeah, I think I'm done. And look, Sammy, I can even like kind of brush out the bottom of my tree to make some um, almost appear like like it's like roots. Is this good? That looks beautiful. Thank you, Sam. Okay, bye. Oh my goodness, Sam. Sorry. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna keep painting. You might be painting still. Right along with me. And if you notice, I'm going over my purple and I'm going over my gray in the background of my two rolling hills. Okay. I'm just about finished painting in my tree. And then my next step is gonna be my shrubs. And if I add a little bit more water, I can make anything that looks um, like it's streaked, I can make it look um, a little bit more smooth by adding just a tiniest bit of water. I can make any streaking go away. All right, I am just about finished with this second tree and then I'm gonna head over to my branches and my, my bushes, my shrubs at the very, very front. And I think I'm gonna do my shrubs a dark green. Sammy did his a light green. I think I'll do something different to show you so we have some two different um, examples to show you with colors. And we are almost done. All right, I just finished my tree. I got in all the little areas. Now I'm gonna do my three um, shrubs right here and I'm gonna go with the dark, dark green. But I'm not gonna use a lot of water. Oh, I put too much water, again. You don't really need very much water to get this paint going. I'd like to make my green darker. So if you want to get your paint looking darker or thicker, take the water out. You can dab it with your, with your napkin or your paper towel, whichever one you have. You might have uh, more than three shrubs. You might've done more. Sammy did more than, than three. I did three. I think I need a little bit more water. All right, I got one shrub here and I can even come down here and do some, something like that. The ground. All right. I am just about done. You work at your pace. And remember, anything that's up in the front, the foreground of the, of the composition that you're working on, that is going to have a darker feel to it. You wanna have less water and you want the, uh, the paint to look thicker and more bold. And then the background to have the appearance of distance. 
you have the, the colors running together. So this is my first time using actual watercolor paper. I've always just used construction paper. So the paper behaved a little bit differently for, for me than what I'm used to. So I had to kind of learn from this. But I liked it. I, I liked trying the, the watercolor paper. It's thicker, it has a thicker feel. It doesn't bend as, easy, as easily. It doesn't like wilt as easily as just the regular white construction paper. And it dries um, more on the flat side than the regular construction paper. Okay, so these were my shrubs. I'm all done. Um, I, can, I can work a little bit more and add another layer if you're feeling like, oh, my shrubs, they don't look dark enough for to make them have a different, a, a different um, like boldness than the, than your, um, than your, uh, what do you call it, the ground behind it, you can come back in and add another layer. So see how I'm doing this second layer of green, um, and it makes it a little bit darker and having it makes it have that a little bit more of a thick texture to it the paint I think I'm going to add a second layer all the way across my three shrubs all right so you are going to finish painting this is the end of using our paint for this lesson you are going to save your paint and you're gonna put it in with your school supplies. We will be doing another watercolor lesson uh, and you are going to need the, your watercolors for that lesson, obviously. You might have watercolors at home and, and you can use those, that's fine also. But save these and put these in a special spot, this set of watercolor. And then, um, let uh, put your uh, artwork in a place to dry. That's a safe place that siblings can't get to and pets can't get to. And then um, let it dry. And then for the last video, you're just gonna need this and a black Sharpie. And it'll wrap up the rest of this lesson. So good luck finishing painting and uh, Sammy and I will see you for the very last video and that will be a fairly short video as well. Good luck and we will see you next time.